Many roads lead to Berlin, the capital of reunited Germany. Surely the most interesting route leads across the bridge Glienicke Brücke. Thus became famous through the exchange of spies during the Cold War. This right was reserved exclusively for the military and diplomats during this time. The Glienicke Brücke was destroyed during the Second World War and in 1949 rebuilt as the Bridge of Unity. However, it took almost 40 years until this occurred. It has been made accessible again for everyone since the fall of the wall in November 1989. The classical outing venue for West Berliners is to the border of the Glienicke Brücke, the summer residence of Prince Karl of Prussia. This former Hardenburg property is a truly beautiful building complex that was reconstructed by order of Prince Karl of Prussia according to several European role models. The park grounds were created by Joseph Lenny, a famous landscape architect. The park and the adjacent forests along the Havel are just as popular today as an outing venue for Berliners as it was during the East-West Wall era. We shall be showing you Berlin from the waterside. You will be acquainted with a city that has more water channels and bridges than Venice possesses. The Spree and Havel rivers have transformed Berlin into becoming the second largest inland port in Germany. Taking a trip to Wannsee has always been a classical outing venue. This unique bathing beach is one of a kind in Europe. It was built towards the end of the 20s. A mansion settlement was built up on the Schwanenweder Peninsula towards the end of the 19th century. The mansion at Am Großen Wannsee 58 has attained a sad reputation as the decision to destroy the lives of 11 million Jews was made here in 1942. This was known in history as the Wannsee Conference. This building is an educational and memorial place since 1997. In the meantime, we have left our landing place on the Charlottenburger banks and are heading up the Spray River. The theater, Theater des Westens, is within the vicinity of the zoo. It is a theater for modern musicals. Built in 1896, originally as an operetta house. One can reach Kurfürstendamm through the recently designed Kranzler Eck. Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church, Gedächtniskirche, is the most prominent place on Kurfürstendamm. It was destroyed during World War II and is now a memorial against all wars worldwide.
The Kuhdamm, as the Berliners lovingly call their Kurfürstendamm, is even today the first place in Berlin where one takes a stroll. The characteristical charm of Kudam is formed by the shoppers, businessmen and tourists alike. Kudam has the right mixture of culture, commerce and comfort. Our journey continues from the so-called Spreekreuz into the Landwehrkanal. The Charlottenburger Brücke lies ahead of us. It was built with its present gate between 1906 and 1908. A statue of Charlotte reminds all of the fact that this entire district was named after her. We are passing through the Tiergarten. The commemorative plaque on the zoo bridge reminds us of Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, who were murdered in 1919, where their lifeless bodies were thrown into the Landwehrkanal. The Federal Ministry for Defense resides on the Reichspeachufer. The memorial plaque for the German resistance movement can be found behind this complex building. It reminds us of the victims, von Stauffenberg and other armed force officers who were killed on the 20th of July 1944 after a failed assassination attempt on Hitler's life. Approaching the new museum island and the square Potsdamer Platz, which has been transformed during the last years. This was once the busiest traffic area in Europe. The new National Gallery was constructed according to designs by the architect Mies van der Rohe. Works of art from the last century can be viewed in the modern temple. St. Matthäus Church was built in 1846, architecturally designed by Stühler. This is now a main focal point and center after extensive renovations were made due to its total devastation during the war, creating a modern museum island. The Cultural Forum, the center point for the different museums, as the Kupferstich Cabinet, the Arts and Crafts Museum, the Philharmonic and the National Library.
Potsdamer Platz is an attractive drawing point in New Berlin. An amusement area arose here in the 19th century. It was the place to meet, in particular for significant politicians, authors and artists. The annual film festival Berlinale takes place today on Potsdamer Platz. This is tied with tradition. The best film of the festival receives a golden bear, which is also the city's emblem. Potsdamer Platz draws tourists from around the world. A distinctive line has been set in the roads around and through Berlin to remind us where the wall once stood. An original piece of the wall which has been preserved through a private initiative. Prince Albrecht Palace, Prince Albrecht Hotel, and an art school once stood during the Emperor's reign on the grounds next to the Martin Gropius building. These buildings were used as the Reich Security Office under Heinrich Himmler's command, the SS and Gestapo during the Nazi terror reign. The daily deeds of horror of the Third Reich were coordinated here. This building was torn down during the 50s. A documentation center will emerge here and shall be known as Topography of the Terror. The original piece of the wall, which is on the edge of the grounds, will be bound within the new complex. Checkpoint Charlie is not far from Potsdamer Platz. Checkpoint Charlie was the Allied transitional border between East and West Germany during the GDR era. Traces of this past era are now fading. The only landmark left is the watch house and a plaque which remind us today of the past. Attention, you are now leaving the American sector. The watch house Checkpoint Charlie exists since 1963. It exhibits photos and documentations of the rise and fall of the wall and the worldwide battle for human rights. The Jewish Museum can be found in Lindenstraße. 
The foundation stone for this modern museum construction was laid by the architect Daniel Liebeskind in 1992. It documents the thousand-year-old German-Jewish history. We continue our journey through the Schöneberg and Kreuzberg districts. The German Museum of Transport and Technology is marked by an airplane hanging in the air and is the largest technological museum in the world. The Raisin Bomber was erected in remembrance of the 50 years of air bridging Berlin. The U-1 is the oldest rail line in the city. Extensive costs led to it being used as a high rail line at the beginning of the 20th century. One of the most prominent sites of our journey is the Church of the Holy Cross. One encounters a typical residential area in the heart of Kreuzberg, which evolved towards the end of the 19th century. While viewing the stucco ornaments, which decorate the outer building facades, one could easily be transferred back into the period of industrial expansion. This quiet and tranquil place offers its dwellers an inviolable quality of life. Their revolutionary energy has enabled them to protect the buildings from unnecessary destruction. It is this particular quality of creative energy which attracts visitors and locals alike. Artistic projects are once again emerging from the hidden inner courtyards and former factories, like the gallery at Fidicinstrasse 40, where artists of various backgrounds can be found under the same roof. One can also view, admire and naturally acquire the works of art in the gallery. Victoria Park, which lies in the center of Kreuzberg, is one of many green spots within the city. A welcome, idyllic scene in the midst of this very lively area. The hill, Kreuzberg, is almost 6,600 centimeters high and is situated in Victoria Park. The Karl Friedrich Monument, designed by Schinkel, is to commemorate the soldiers whom fought during the War of Independence. This monument can be sited on the highest point of Kreuzberg. The district Kreuzberg, meaning Cross Mountain, was named after a cross that had been erected on the top of the mountain. The Berliners lovingly call their mountain Kreuzberg the Six Thousander. And only then, when one has climbed to the top, can one enjoy the spectacular view of the entire city.
The Channel Landwehrkanal expands ahead of us, towards the port Urbanhafen, which was completed in 1886. Once an industrial port that gradually lost its popularity. Today it is embraced by Buckler Park, thus being a place to meet and for moments of leisure. The liveliest multicultural residential area in Kreuzberg is situated on the Paulinke banks, where the young and old from different nationalities meet. The cafes within the vicinity of the Paulinke banks are a popular meeting place. The houses in this area have been interestingly transformed through extensive renovations, especially the rooftops. The market opposite us on the Maybach banks takes place twice a week, where the Turkish community offers an enormous selection of fruit and vegetables. The Kreuzberg and Treptow districts meet on the right-hand side of the banks, where the Berlin Wall once stood for just about 40 years. We are now approaching the Spree River again that flows behind the floodgates ahead, as we are leaving the Channel Landwehrkanal behind us. Treptow lies close to the Spree River. The Soviet monument in Treptow Park is to remind us of their victory over the Nazi regime. A Russian soldier stands in the midst, depicted in bronze, while triumphantly standing on a crust swastika. This is also the final resting place for thousands of Soviet soldiers whom fell during World War II. Berlin's highest office block, the Trepp Towers, is situated in Treptow and is located directly by the Spray River. The Molecule Man, three figures erected in 1998, a work of art by the American artist Jonathan Borowski. This piece of artwork emerges out of the Spray River and stretches itself towards the sky. There are modern office buildings bordering the former property of the electric and appliance factory, adjoined by the Arena, an important venue for concerts and other events. Ahead of us is the city's most attractive, well-proportioned bridge. The Oberbaumbrücke, constructed between 1894 and 1896 by Otto Stahn, is the longest bridge in Berlin that stretches across the Spree River. In the early days, it was the last station for the subway line U1. 
The Oberbaumbrücke is once again the most important connecting element between East and West Berlin. On the top of the bridge towers, one can see the Brandenburg Eagle to the left and to the right the Berliner Bear. On the right side of the Spree River, we find the district Friedrichshain, which was named after Friedrich the Great, and yet it never did develop in the playground for the rich. Rather than that, it is the suburb for the city's working class, where also the backyard industries developed, combining private and working life. The artist Zille was repeatedly inspired by the local environment. The younger generation predominantly reside in this area. The avenues Karl Marx and Frankfurter Allee were constructed between 1952 and 1960. They are considered to be architectural masterpieces, originally known at the time as Stalin Allee, and only to be renamed later in 1961. The Stalin monument was also removed in the same year. These avenues are regarded today as the parade streets, according to the socialistic Moscovite ideals. The buildings, which consist of 3,000 apartments, are richly cladded with stucco ornaments and pillars. One could easily be transformed back into the given era. Quoting a statement made by Hermann Henselmann, the architect responsible for the 1.7-kilometer-long ensemble, we not only build houses, we also mold emotions into structural forms. The Scotsman Chris McLean took the initiative to create the East Side Gallery, situated on the Mühlenstraße, the largest open-air gallery in the world. It is 1.3 kilometers long and is under protection by the Historical Buildings and Monument Trust, thus also being the longest remaining stretch of the Berlin Wall. A collective of over 100 artists from East and West helped to mold this work of art. However, single segments of the wall are deteriorating due to gnawing weather conditions and have recently been restored. The wall once ran along the right side bank of the Spray River and over the bridge Schillingbrücke then further on into Kreuzberg district ahead of us. The former death strip Todesstreifen has been transformed into an open lawn. The adjacent church of St. Thomas is one of the largest churches in Berlin.
The journey continues past the old factory and modern office buildings. The viaduct curve of the city's first rail influenced the right side of the Spray River that leads into Mühlendamm. The governing mayor of Berlin's office is situated in the tower on the right of the Red Town Hall, Rotes Rathaus. The Neptune Fountain, Neptunbrunnen, is located in the center of an opening within the vicinity of the town hall. Neptune, the god of oceans, surrounded by his royal household. A group of monuments is also located in this opening. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels for one. The surrounding monumental pillars are a documentation of the workers' movement. They are embossed with photographic journals. The television tower, opened in 1969, is located on Alexanderplatz and can be seen from several areas around Berlin. It is not only the highest building in Berlin, measuring 365 meters, it is also the third largest television tower in Europe, plus the only one of its kind that stands in the middle of a city. The district Prenzlauer Berg begins directly behind Alexanderplatz, the invigorating new cultural scene. Many of the city's taverns and cafes have established themselves here in the heart of this district, the Kater Kolwitz Square. The life-size sculpture of Kater Kolwitz that is harbored here is an exact replica modeled according to a self-portrait. continues past the museum Märkisches Museum. We shall soon reach the historical harbour and the island Fischerinsel that lies within a side channel of the Spray River. The district Nikolaiviertel commences behind the bridge Mühlendammbrücke and is enhanced by the Nikolai Church Twin Towers. The Nikolaiviertel belongs to the city's oldest settlement. This district was almost completely destroyed during World War II and underwent extensive renovations in 1987 and now presents itself as a tourist gem with its wide variety of souvenir stores and taverns. The 13th century Nikolaikirche is the oldest church in Berlin and stands amid the Nikolaiviertel. The statue of St. George, whom can be admired here, once stood in the city castle. The Palace of the Republic, opposite the Dome, occupies the site of the Baroque city castle that was completely demolished in 1950. 
The castle gave way to the palace, and yet reconstruction of the castle seems inevitable. We continue our journey past the former Council of State over the Kupfergraben towards the palace Kronprinzenpalais. The old library is behind the palace on the square Bibelplatz. The Humboldt University lies diagonally across the street. An equestrian statue of Friedrich the Great stands at the entrance of the boulevard Unter den Linden that leads towards the Brandenburger Tor. Gendarmenmarkt is one of the most beautiful squares in the city. It is surrounded by other magnificent buildings such as the Playhouse, Schauspielhaus, the French and the German Dome. The churches were built at the beginning of the 17th century by order of Friedrich I. Past the armory, Zeughaus, we continue over the Kupfergraben towards the actual museum's island. The old National Gallery is adjacent to the Spray River. The statue depicts the extraordinary King Friedrich Wilhelm IV, whom by his order chose to have this place dedicated to arts and sciences. A variety of museums are united here today. The old museum, which was built by Karl Friedrich Schinkel, is adjacent to the dome. Lustgarten, meaning the Garden of Desires, is a meeting place for people from around the world today. The Berliner Dome is an adaption of the Petersdom in Rome. This neo-Renaissance building was almost totally destroyed during the war. It was reconstructed during the last third of the 20th century. The Berlin Central District, Mitte, has developed itself into the main focus point since the wall opened. The courtyards Hackersche Höfe are a drawing attraction for tourists. They are Germany's largest and valued historical artistic courtyards. The first courtyard is under monumental protection due to its colorfully glazed Jugendstil facade. The original draft of the courtyards is being revived. A mixed utilization of art, culture, dwelling, commerce and gastronomy is being combined. An active driving force is continually developing in the district Mitte. Galleries and cafes have established themselves in the area known as Scheunenviertel. The typical Hinterhof idyllen meaning backyard idyll, can yet be found in great numbers. The Volksbühne was built in the center of the Scheunviertel to make the theatrical world more accessible for the average worker. Berlin's former Jewish community of about 160,000 people 
once resided around Hackescher Markt. Most of these residents were deported by the Nazis to the extermination camps Vernichtungslager during the Third Reich. A few bronze statues in the old Jewish cemetery remind us of the tragic event. Not far from here is the church Sophienkirche, built in 1712. It possesses Berlin's only baroque tower. A monument on the square Koppernplatz also reminds us of the Jewish deportations during the Nazi era in Germany. The new synagogue in Oranienburger Straße was destroyed during World War II. It was restored much later towards the end of the 20th century. The dome is 50 meters high and marks the cityscape. Oranienburger Straße is a drawing attraction for many as it has been during the last centuries. This street was a rebellious neglected area during the 90s and has developed today into a popular shopping area filled with restaurants and taverns. The gallery Kunsthaus Tacheles, where artists have established themselves at the west end of the street, has survived the turbulent post-reunification era. We continue our journey towards Friedrichstraße. The old Friedrichstadtpalast once stood next to Brecht's former theatre, Berliner Ensemble, at the right of the Spray River. Thus was demolished due to its dilapidated state. It was later rebuilt close to the bridge Weidendammbrücke. Reichstagsufer is to the left of the Spray River. The Federal Press and Information Services and the new ARD Capital Studios now reside in the new buildings that surround the Reichstag. The Reichstag is the most representative building in the new government district. Berlin required a new government building as it became the capital in 1871. Thus was commissioned by Wilhelm II. Completed in 1894, after ten years of construction, it went up into flames in 1933. The restorations after the reunification were completed in 1999 and since then, it is the seat of the German Bundestag, the new capital landmark. One can walk through its imposing dome that lures thousands of people. Berlin's probably most meaningful building is a stone throw away from the Reichstag. None other possesses more symbolic power than the Brandenburger Tor does. Covered or uncovered, it symbolizes Germany's division and reunification. It was erected in 1791 and bordered onto the original Berlin. It was unveiled again in 2002 after a long restoration phase. The square Pariser Platz that lies behind it opens into the Boulevard Unter den Linden and leads to the Berliner Dome. 
This area once lay fallow and was the wall strip during the GDR era. It is now a place where people from around the world have peaceful encounters. Der Rufer is a copy of an original sculpture by Gerhard Marx. It stands in front of the Brandenburger Tor. A quotation by Francesco Petrarca is inscribed on a plaque at the base of the sculpture. I wander through the world and call out, peace, peace, peace. The new government buildings are located directly next to the Reichstag. These buildings are called the Bond of Alliance, Band des Bundes, because of their alignment. This bond stretches from the city's central district across the Spray River towards the Tiergarten district. It starts with the paul Löber House, an office complex for the Bundestag delegates, and later ends in the Bundeskanzleramt. The Mary Elizabeth Luders House that rises to the right of the Spray River accommodates the library and the Scientific Professionals Academy. After we have passed the Bundestag Kindergarten to our left, we then reach the Federal Chancellor's building, the Bundeskanzleramt. The Bond of Alliance ends here. The city station Leata Stadtbahnhof will be Berlin's main railway station. The former railway station Hamburger Bahnhof behind it is now a gallery for modern art. The monument to the wall in Bernauer Straße demonstrates in an impressionable way how people unconsciously once stood in opposition towards the inhuman death strip, Todesstreifen. The construction of the wall commenced on the 13th of August 1961 and was later opened on the 9th of November 1989. It demanded numerous human lives during the 28 years of its existence. Two people lost their lives here while attempting to flee in August 1961. The House of World Cultures, Haus der Kulturen der Welt, was built in 1957. The pregnant oyster, as locals call it, was originally designed to be used as a congress hall. 
Exhibitions and international musical evening events are featured here today. The Victory Column, Siegessäule, from 1873, stands proudly on the roundabout Großer Stern. Crowned by an eight-meter-high golden angel called Goldelse, as the Berliners called their goddess of victory, glances down from her 48 meters of height over Berlin. The castle, Schloss Bellevue, built in 1786, lies behind the bridge Lutherbrücke. The castle and its landscaped parks are very close to the Spray River and are now the official residence of the President of Germany. Our journey through Berlin upon the inner city Spray River and through the Landwehrkanal is nearing its end. Past the glass towers of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, we are approaching the banks Charlottenburger Ufer where our journey began. <laughs> 